So let's begin uh, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. If you found your place, let's stand for the reading of God's word. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, it says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and of sound mind. Therefore, do not be ashamed uh, of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began, but has now been revealed by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and brought life into mortality in, or immortality into light, uh, through the gospel to which I was appointed a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles. For this reason, I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know who I believe and am persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. Let us pray. Father God, may you add the blessings upon the reading of your word. Lord, may you open our hearts and minds to receive what you have for us this morning. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, when we think about fearless, we think about someone maybe that has a lot of bravery. Think of someone that uh, maybe a, a superhero figure or maybe uh, as some stories we read in the, in the newspapers and local things where, where uh, men of uh, law enforcement and first responders have come in and kind of saved the day, if you will, used their training uh, to help others and uh, pull people out of precarious situations. You know, we think about men and women that have to be fearless going into battle to protect us and bring our freedoms. There's so many things we can think about being uh, fearless, but in our walk with Christ, it, there has to be a point that uh, the fear is of God is definite in our life, but we can live fearless in front of men. And it's a very one of those areas where you say, well, what are you trying to play a trick on the word or something? Well, no, it's, there's a lot of truth in it. I want to look at the first area here. It says to be fearless in this world or to be fearless, we must first uh, fear God to receive power. Now, the power we're talking about is, is not just supernatural power uh, to lift things and everything, but if you look at 1 Timothy 7, it says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power. The power God is talking about here is the power of, of the Holy Spirit working in us. He says that first, we need to fear the Lord. If you go to Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7, it says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of what? It's the beginning of knowledge. It says, But fools despise wisdom and instruction. There are so many things that we could say about that, but I just wanted to share this with you that the power that we want to receive in Christ has to become of one of reverence and understanding of who he is to us. Uh, I think of Daniel. I think of Daniel and his three friends. We commonly refer to them as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. At the beginning of, of that story where Daniel and his three friends were captured, taken into captivity, and they were introduced into the king's court, and he was uh, given, they were given a... Uh, a person to watch over them. And he was to feed them, instruct them, teach them in the ways they need to go, send them to the places they need to go to get all the things that the king wanted instilled in their hearts and minds. Uh, and again, the king chose all the bright, uh, the smartest, uh, uh, the cleanest, look, healthiest looking uh, men in the area and brought them in for this uh, to teach them uh, all these uh uh, all these things he wanted them to know. And a lot of it was knowledge. A lot of it was different knowledge to, uh, to uh, uh, use their intelligence that God gave them uh, to further them and to make them uh, as useful uh, uh, tools in his arsenal as, they, as he could get. Uh, little did he know, the king know, but with these four guys that were here, uh, it says that the Lord did something special. 
when these guys walked in, they didn't really have to say anything, but, the, but God put in the man's heart that was watching over him, he put in his heart a, something different for these boys. He, the Lord gave him an inkling that there was something special and that he should listen to what they say. Before any of the story really starts, before any of this really came about, the Lord spoke to this man that was watching over Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It wasn't long after their encounter and in captivity that they were being introduced to all the new rules and things, and they were uh, the common thing that we know they were introduced to their new diet. They were going to partake of the king's table, the king's meat, the king's wine, and Daniel, in his heart, and knew what God wanted for them. He said, I'm not going to partake of this meat. I'm not going to partake of the king's table. And he was talking to uh, the guy that was over him, and if you, you kind of get the understanding here, they were taken in conta- into captivity. They, they weren't taken um, to a boarding school. It wasn't taken to somewhere nice or where it was a, a, a smooth transitional environment for them. They were ripped out of their homes, taken uh, by force, and really meant to just change everything about them from their diet to even how they worshipped. They wanted to take away uh, the God of, of, of them. They, they didn't want to think that God Almighty was the God. They had many other gods that they served uh, in the king's palace. And it was very confusing probably for them at first Many of the boys, the young men that came in, fell victim of the king's table. They took of the king's meat, and they took of his teachings, and they fell for it. And they enjoyed it. But Daniel and his friends, they had to make a stand. They had to receive the power of God to be able to, be able to stand against a king, so to speak, and be able to say, I'm not going to be eating of this food. I'm not going to be eating of the, these things. And the guy that was over him, he says, okay, I'll give you 10 days. There's 10 days. That's what they agreed on. 10 days, we'll try you eating vegetables and drinking water and things. We'll compare you. And God blessed them. We know the story. God blessed them to be able to go through that and, and, and shine. These guys were uh, men that grew in knowledge, that grew uh, in their, in their complexion, as it says, it, in, in every way, they grew better than any other men there. And again, that wasn't their power. That wasn't the new fad diet that was going through that made their complexion good and cleansed their system, and they lost weight, and they were, you know, were able to focus, and you know, they detoxed their body completely to where everything was just working great. It was the power of God. Before they entered into that place, before they entered into the captivity or as they're entering captivity, God spoke to the people that was over them and started working immediately. See, when we fear people, when God's his word says is, who is man that I should fear? But when we fear man, we often forget the power of God. When we fear what will happen to us if we don't obey what is the norm or what seems to be the norm in the world, we often turn to ourselves rather than God. But when we fear God and we receive the power of God and understand how to use the power of God in this world to be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, we will be able to understand that we can be fearless facing the world, facing the adversary, facing the trials and tribulations out there because we have something greater than that is in us. These young boys went against the kingdom that believed that the God that they served was not real. They believed that they had all these other little gods, these idols and things that they worshipped at all times. Daniel, in, in his ministry, as you read the book of Daniel, you'll see how he uh, was able to prove to them time and time again that their gods and their uh, people that were so-called prophets and uh, uh, seers and explainers of dreams uh, they couldn't do that. God blessed Daniel to be able to interpret dreams. There's certain aspects of this that you look at and it's like, well, yes, Daniel was very smart. He was very, uh, he had a lot of knowledge and he had a lot of understanding. So that's how he was able to move up and rank and all this. No, 
Daniel had a fear of God in his life, and he wanted to respect the God that he served to the point that he would not let anything come in between that. To be able to have that kind of confidence in our Lord and have that kind of understanding of the power that he can bestow on us is absolutely amazing. Today, you may feel defeated. You may feel uh, a part of your life that is uh, held back, or maybe you're scared to move forward. Maybe the, the unknown uh, is so overwhelming that you just can't say yes to when you know that it is a calling of God on your life. It is so comfortable to sit there and be able to listen and to go through the motions. But when, it's, when we are put to the test, brothers and sisters, it is truly, truly something that takes a power of more than ourselves to do this. If there's a lot of good people out there. There's a lot of people that do good things. There's things that, that we can all look at in this world, and there is, there's a lot, there is positive out there mixed up in the evil of this world. But not everything is done in a way that is pleasing to God. Not everything that is good is exactly pleasing to the Lord. See, when we serve the Lord and we receive his power, not everything that we do in that is going to be all these great greatnesses in our life. There's things we're going to face that we're going to have to re rely on God's power and strength to get us through that is not comfortable. You think of the worst thing that we could face, and that is death. Death in our families, death in our friendships. That is something that is so hard to face. It is not something pretty to look at. But when we understand the power of God, when he says that he sent his son to this earth to die on the cross for our sins, that if we would believe in him and trust in him, that we shall not perish but have everlasting life. There is power in his name. There is power that can bring forgiveness of sin. And we know we have that hope in heaven. We have a hope and we have hope in that power that when we do pass, that we have a place there. But we still have a time here on earth, the ones that are left, that need to deal with that. And that is a very hard thing to deal with. How do I do that? Well, I need the power of God in my life to be able to persevere. Not that I can just have a good day, but so we can make it. There's so many times, it, just, it's, it is heavy. Life is heavy. And there's different things to work out and work through. There's people that uh, are, are in bondage over certain areas in their life. They need something stronger than themselves. They seek it out. But when we put things in, uh, in place of God, the fear is not in God, the fear is in this world, or fear is in man, then we have a tendency to fall into that trap. We have a tendency to fall into the trap that the world sets up to and snares us in, and it is so hard, it is so hard to get out of. It says in Ecclesiastes, it says, The fear of God, and to keep his commandments, it says, This is man's all. To fear God and to keep his commandments, this is man's all. For God will bring every good work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether it good or evil. God knows what we need. He knows what exactly we're going to face. And he says the only thing, he just says, fear, fear me and keep my commandments. Understand who I am. Understand that you need me in your life. When we look at God's commandments, the interesting thing is you can look at it in one or two ways. And I think the first way is when we fear man more than anything or we fear ourselves more than anything is we look at his commandments as a bunch of rules and regulations to live by. Obey your parents in the Lord. Oh, my. You know what? The last thing I want to hear as a kid is obey mom and dad. I know I have to because it's mom and dad. And if I don't, I'm going to reap the wrath, you know? It's coming. That backhand that dad had, it was good. And it could find your head anywhere in this, in, on the pew, you know what I'm saying? And it was, and, and you know you really messed up when you got that, go outside. <whistles> Ooh, I'm telling you, if these four years could talk, it'd be a, they'd have some uh, great stories in there. But I knew... There are certain things I had to do as I, I feared. But I wasn't fearful as I'm fear for my life or fear is just scared to death. I, I, had a, I had a respect. But on the other side, just 
I wanted to fear and respect my God first. As I grew and I learned in these commandments that God has, if, and especially just when you think of the Ten Commandments, if you look and you learn on these things and see what God is trying to do, He's not trying to make us into robots or people that just do a specific thing, a specific task every day. He's trying to show you that in all areas of your life, if you could follow some, some, different, some, some decent guidelines, some rules I laid out for you, you'd understand that you need me in your life. You need me because I'm greater than these problems, and I can show you how to work through them. I can help you. I can hold you up with my righteous right hand, and I can bring you into salvation of these. And everything that God has done, as we read in his word, he has brought it to completion. So you don't have to sit there and say, well, I have this little problem. God can't help me out with it. But guess what? He can help you out with the little to the, to the greatest and help you work through those things. It is such a blessing to be able to do that. But sometimes when we are afraid of ourselves, we, we have a tendency to uh, be ashamed. So the next thing I want to look at is you know, to, to be fearless, we must first fear God, or we must fear God to be able to love Him and not be ashamed. You know, a lot of times when we find someone that wants to correct us all the time, they're not usually our most favorite person. They're not the one we go running to and, and loving on and all this. But as we grow older, we, we recognize that was a necessity in our life. We want to love that person a little bit more. But for the love that we want to have in God, he tells us and teaches us many passages in his word how to love him. How to be able to be a part of that family of God. To accept what he is what he did when he sent his son to this earth to die on the cross for our sins. We see that he loved us so much. But there is a part here in verse 8. It says, Therefore do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me as prisoner. There's going to be some times where you're going to have to choose to live out your testimony. Or you're going to choose to be ashamed of that testimony and live out the life that you think is pleasing to that situation. There's things that can happen where you're at work, whether you're at home, whether you're by yourself, or maybe you're, you're out with your friends. You choose to act a certain way, do a certain thing a certain way, and we forget that we have a testimony that, get, that God has given us that we need to share with others. And when we have a tendency to have a fear of what people think and a fear of uh, the actions that if we do something that's different, it may stand out and we may be uh, a, an object of ridicule or we may not be the coolest in the group anymore. You might be the killer joy. You might be the downer of the group. You might be whatever you want to fill in the blank there. You have that fear, so you kind of dial back uh, the testimony. You know, and it's, it's so interesting uh, to, to talk with people and, 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 and self-evaluate as well of, about how easily it is to be ensnared and get entangled up in, in the event of now and forget that our God has always been there for us and will continue to be there for us. He says, and again, going back to Ecclesiastes, he says, uh, he says God will bring forth every, every good work into judgment, e including every secret thing whether it's evil or good. He's not going to overlook things in our life. We're going to be called on the carpet. He loves us enough, not just to save us from our sins, but to keep us upright. He says, whom he loves, he chastens. He goes after. He will help us to stand upright. If that means we have to get a little discipline every now and then to, to straighten us out, if, he, if our world has to be rocked a little bit for him to uh, help us to understand, uh, I heard a testimony when I was a young boy, and uh, I didn't know until later years uh, who uh, uh, this person was, but it happened to be somebody I knew very close to me, still know them. Uh, but uh, it, it comes into this, this young man uh, was living, he was in the mountains, 
and uh, they didn't have a whole lot to do. Uh, this guy, he got bored, and he made some friends. The friends introduced him to, to things, and even to, to this day, he doesn't blame his friends for doing it. He doesn't blame his friends for making him. He had a choice. He made the choice to do it. He said he would have found it with his friends or not. So we're not blaming the friends here, but really wasn't a good situation either way. But anyway, he, he started uh, uh, taking things, uh, s- severe drug abuse and alcohol abuse, uh, to fill a void that was in his life. Uh, little did he know at the time his mother was on her knees every night praying for him for her salvation to come. When she realized that the prayer of salvation for him uh, uh, was not working, it's like he's not hearing it. He's not understanding. He, he knows the Bible. He, he could tell you stories. He could quote things to you. He says, but, but it, 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 took, it took something. It took that mom sitting there. She, and the way she tells it, she said that one night she just, she says, I don't know what else to pray for my son. She said, the only way I know to make him stay home is that you take his legs away from him. And I sat there, and I, you're hearing that testimony, and you're like, what? That night, she gets a call. They have to go to the hospital. They go to the hospital, and there he is. They had an accident, and he's in the hospital. Both legs broke. It wasn't really bad. It was where they could repair the legs. He was going to be all right but he was going to be bound up for a while. And guess what? Mom got some news that she's been waiting to hear for a long time. He's going to have to stay in the house for at least a month. That mom preached. She prayed. She left little notes. She left things out there where he could see it to make him think of anything she could think of, but he, she wanted him to think of God in all areas. Come to find out the break that he needed to be able to come off the drugs and the alcohol, which was a very hard and rough time for him. It brought on more medical problems that still plagues him today. But he said in those moments, in those dark times, he realized that he was more ashamed of God than he was ashamed of his addiction problem and more ashamed of his uh, alcohol problem. You see, his family was very involved in church. His father was actually a pastor. It was kind of an embarrassment to the family. But he didn't see it that way. He, he finally saw that this was something that he was using because he was so ashamed of how he did not have a relationship with God. And he tried to compound all these things on top of it to make that go away. See, God was talking to him. Like God talks to me and you, he was convicting him and he was working in his life, but he tried to overcome that with everything and anything he knew. Thankfully for his loving mother and father and family, through prayer and a lot of support, this man not only was saved, turned away from all those things, and is now in ministry, working and doing things great for the Lord. Not a day goes by where he doesn't try to spread the word of God, to share the word of God with someone. Now, there's times he's a little bit uh, over, I mean, he's, he's a very excited person. I'll just say that. He's very excited, and if you get in front of him sometimes, he, he, might, he, he might go after you a little bit. But uh, he's one of those that he, he's not going to let you just give him a little answer about God. He's going to actually be concerned about you and your faith. It took a lot for this man to get there. But nevertheless, God blessed him and forgave him. You're talking about how much does God love you? Well, he loves you enough. He loves you enough to get your attention. The only way he knows how that will work for you He'll get it, and you still have an opportunity to make a decision with him. Sometimes it's not very pleasant, but when we talk about God loving us, it's not always hugs and kisses. Sometimes it is a just God that loves us, and his justness does have to come through. 
But when you understand how much he loves you, you'll understand how much you do not have to be ashamed. You will go through trials. Your things will be hard. Your faith will be tried. Your love for the Lord will be tried. The love for people will be tried. But if you stand in this world unashamed of God, he says he won't be ashamed of you. You'll have a place in heaven and a home in heaven. And guess what? You don't have to let fear hold you down from sharing that love with others. Some of the other things that we can be thankful for or is that we don't have to have we can be fearless and we can have fear with God to help us keep a sound mind. How many of us is that's something that would be very pleasant to have, a sound mind? And I'm not talking about one that just that's very reasonable and that, you know, hey, you're a good thinker, you're a good listener, stuff like that. But you have a sound mind. You have one that is not going to float around. It's not going to be pulled from different things, that or the other. But you're going to be able to listen and be able to understand God in your life. I think sometimes we fear man and fear ourselves and fear things around us more than we fear God because we often don't have the soundness of mind to understand what he wants for us. Let me give you a for instance. In Galatians chapter 5, it tells us that there's things that we're walking in. There's things that our, our, our flesh cries out for. And in fear of missing out, in fear of not being able to participate in these things, fear of uh, not being able to have the pleasure and the satisfaction that these things give for a temporary time we all fall into these but let's let's just read this it says um, i say then we walk in the spirit and you shall uh, sh you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh for the flesh the the flesh lust against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish so there's always a battle to look out for. There is a battle that our flesh cries out to do things against the spirit. And we have to keep that in check. Again, having that sound mind to be able to understand that there's some things that are wrong with me that I don't need to let happen. I don't need to just let it go. I don't need to just be that free spirit and just let whatever comes to my mind happen. Sometimes no is important. And sometimes no is okay. It says, verse 18, But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, and these are the things in which they become, it becomes evident. Adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentious, jealousy, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, evils, murders, drunkenness, rivalries, and the like you know you look at that and there's like well what is there left in life after i look at that now that just takes all the joy away from life doesn't it well uh, it just depends on what side of the tracks you're on i guess but there's a lot more that god gives us to look at it says but the fruit of the spirit this is like when i don't give in to the flesh when i receive the power when i receive the love of god and understand that and he puts that sound mind on me that sound mind will help me remember that this is the product of my walk with him. Love, joy, peace. These words, not something you love in your life or would like. Long-suffering, not something that is just real quick to do it, but long-term. We're thinking that this is something that lasts in my life and I'll give to others. Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. These are things that we well know that are there. We call these the fruits of the Spirit. This is something that is so great. We love to look at these things and be able to say, well, I'd, I'd love to have that and that outlook on life. We can have that and we can joy in that if we would just allow God to work in our life. 
For God has not given us the spirit of fear, that fear that contains us to a point that we forget the power of God. But He can help us to be fearless by taking on His power, His love, and the sound mind that He can give us through His work. So we look at this last passage, verse 12, the, the passage we looked at today. And this is where we want to close with this. It says, For this reason I also suffer these things, but nevertheless, I suffer in things. My life is challenged by not following the flesh, challenged by being able to lean on the power of God and not myself. I'm challenged even by the simplest task of reading my Bible and praying every day. I'm challenged with that when I walk, when I get up and, and start walking, that I want to take on things of God and just instead of me. It says I'm challenged by that, but nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed. Do you know who you believe? Do you know who you put your trust in? He says, I know who I believed, and I am also persuaded. Well, how are you persuaded? Well, there's truth in it then. There's something that has proven positive that it is true what I believe in. Not that this is a fairy tale, not this is just a good story, not that this is just a passage that somebody did for, for a motivational speech. This is something that has been proven and he is persuaded. You can't change his mind now. This is the way he's living. This is the way he wants us to live. That he, God, is able to keep what I have committed to him. What did I commit to him? I committed my life. I didn't commit a part. I didn't commit a ministry. I didn't commit a family. I didn't commit just uh, my children so they would be safe and be sound. I committed my life to him. That when I serve him and I seek him first in my life, that all these other issues fall right into place. He puts them in order, and he helps me to see a clear way. I serve a God, you serve a God, that loves us unconditionally, and that will help you. You do not have to be ashamed before him. You don't have to be fearful of him, but fear with him. Use that respect, that, that reverency that he is due. Don't give that to somebody else. If you understand what he's done for you, don't give that to somebody. Don't give it to into yourself because we're not worthy of that. We're worthy of his forgiveness and his grace because he's given us mercy. But don't give somebody else in this world that was a sinner just like you and me that respect and reverence that is only reserved for God Almighty. hard to be fearless in a world where we're taught to be fearful of everything you fear God and he'll put those things in place so you can be fearless and you can live a life of worth and a life that is pleasing to God most of all this morning as we come to a close if there is something that maybe you don't you're like I, I just I got this, this thing in front of me. I don't know, maybe don't know exactly what it is, but I know I've been keeping things in front of me from growing with God. You can come this morning and pray about that and ask God to remove that. Maybe the fears that you've been having in your life are fears that are misplaced. Maybe you've been given more power to something else over you than letting God be over you. There's a lot of things that can control us in this world and it doesn't make us a lost cause just makes us a person that can receive again the forgiveness of God and be able to overcome these obstacles. Trust in that power that he has for you. Trust in that love. Don't be ashamed. He'll give you that sound mind that you need. This morning if you need some, some time with the Lord, I pray you come forward or pray where you are. Pray to God what he's convicted you over. If you don't know him this morning, if you've never received him as your Lord and Savior, I pray today of the day that you might come forward and we'll help you to lead you 
and to knowing Jesus as your Lord and Savior so you can begin to walk in this world truly fearless uh, of the things in this world. Let us pray. Father God, we pray, Lord, that you'll just continue to guide and direct in the closing of our service. Lord, uh, may you just uh, continue to guide us and work, convict us, Lord, that uh, we can be shown, Lord, how to come to you, Lord, unashamed, to live a life that you have for us unashamed. But Lord, most of all, we don't have to live in fear of other things, Lord, but we can give you what you deserve. And I pray, God, you'll help us with that. Lord, there's somebody here that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior. I pray that they would uh, find the courage, Lord, to be able to stand and be able to say they need you as Lord and Savior and to ask forgiveness of their sins and come into their life. Lord, I pray you just give them, give them that encouragement, God, to do that. And Lord, the promise that you will fulfill it. So Lord, be with us as we have this time of invitation. In the name of the prayer.